Okay, we are now in section 2.6 and we will be talking about limits involving infinity and asymptotes of graphs. Here we've got two very familiar functions. One is y is equal to 1 over x and we know that the graph behaves this way. It has a vertical asymptote at x equal to 0 because the domain is that we do not include zero in the domain. And observe that there's also a horizontal asymptote where y approaches zero on this side and y approaches zero on this side. Now what about this other function? We have y is equal to one over x squared. And the only difference is it's symmetric about the vertical line, again the same restriction on the domain as in this function. So that means x cannot be equal to zero because we will have a division by zero. And observe that it also has a vertical asymptote as well as a horizontal asymptote. Remember asymptotes are lines from which the graph of the function approaches. So it, as x gets larger the y values or the graph approach the horizontal asymptote and if we let the x's approach negative infinity then the curve approaches the horizontal line y equal to zero. Okay so based on that what do we say is the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity. Like we said that means we let x go grow in infinitely large, then what happens to the re reciprocal? Well, you can just do that by observing what, what happens when we plug in large numbers for x. Say x is equal to 100, then 1 over x is 0 0.01. If x is equal to 1000, then 1 over 1000 is 0 0.001 etc. So if, it, if it's 1 over 1 billion then you really have a number that's very very small when you take its reciprocal which means the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. The same way see this matches the graph of this matches the graph of the function as x grows infinitely positively large then the reciprocal goes to 0 as well as if our x's grow large in the negative sense, then the limit of 1 over x is also equal to 0. Now what do you think happens to 1 over x squared? Well, it's, it's the same. In fact, for both of these ratios, the reciprocal, the limit of 1 over x squared, whether x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, as you can see, the graph of 1 over x squared tapers off and goes to 0, and y on the other side also goes to 0. So the 1 over x squared, all of this, their limits all go to 0. So in general, what do we have? We have that the, as long as p is positive, okay, make sure that p is positive, then the limit of 1 over x to the p as x goes to either plus or minus infinity is equal to zero. Now what about polynomials? Remember what are polynomials? And let me give you an example. Say y is equal to 3 x to the fourth plus 6 x cubed minus 4 x plus 5. That's an example of a polynomial. So let's do it term by term. Let's consider the following. Okay, what is the limit of x as x goes to plus or minus infinity? Well, it's x going to infinity, therefore that's just the identity function, so it goes to infinity, and it's also, if x goes to minus infinity, of course, the other one goes to minus infinity, it's the identity. Whatever happens to x is what, whatever happens to y. Now what about when it's a squared term, whether they go to plus infinity or negative infinity, they both go to plus infinity. Now what about x cubed? Well, as x goes to infinity, the cube term of course goes to infinity. 
But as x goes to negative infinity, see here, x goes to negative infinity, then the cube term, because it's negative, it goes to minus infinity. So in general, if you have, say, 3x to the 4th, say 6x to the 3rd, etc., the limit will then depend on the coefficient of x to the n as well as whether n is odd or even. So we'll just write here it's either plus or minus infinity. So what do we observe? If we have, if we take the limit of a to the x to the n where n is positive, then it's either plus or minus infinity. And of course, when we take the reciprocal, then it's the opposite. The limit of 1 over x to the p is equal to 0. Theorem 12. According to Theorem 12, all the limit laws in Theorem 1 are true, and we replace the limit. Remember, we have there that the limit as x approaches some number c. We replace everything by, as, by the limit as x approaches plus infinity or negative infinity, and all the limit laws apply. So let's, uh, let's look at this, uh, these following examples. But the thing we have to remember is that when we have a reciprocal, the limit is 0, as long as remember that p is positive. Same thing if not, uh, here n is also positive. So if we have a times x to the n, say 2x squared, 3x squared, negative 4x cubed, etc., then the limit would either be plus or minus infinity, and that would be the determined by whether n is odd or even and whether a is positive or negative. Okay, so let's determine the, uh, let's look at these following problems. So take the limit of 3 plus 1 over x. That's equal to the limit of 3 plus the limit of 1 over x. As x approaches infinity on both terms, and we know that the limit of a constant is a constant, so 3 plus the limit of a reciprocal is equal to 0, so that's equal to 3. Now here, this is just equal to 2 pi times the limit of 1 over x cubed, since we can factor out the coefficient, and of course that's just 2 pi times 0, that's equal to 0. So really whenever you have a constant divided by an x to a degree, to a power or exponent, then the limit is always 0. Now here is a different scenario. We have a constant, a reciprocal, and x to the n term. So as you can see, the limit of 4 is equal to 4. The limit of 1 over x is 0, but here, remember that minus, um, that x squared goes to plus infinity, but it's multiplied by negative 5, which means the limit of this whole expression is equal to minus infinity, since it will dominate uh, 4 anyway.